All right. Rosite Dorfman disease, an important one to know, also known by the name of sinus histiocytosis with massive lymphadenopathy when it occurs in lymph nodes. Obviously, that name doesn't really make sense when it occurs in soft tissue, which is the main time that I encounter it. All right. So what you see from low power, my, my former fellow, Dr. Betsy Uhlenhaek, uh, she liked to say pink and blue, baby. So there's a shout out for Betsy, who's an awesome fellow. Um, it, that low power, you have pink and blue areas. So you have these sheets of pale pink or even gray, and those are the, the rosei Dorfman histiocytes. And then these punctuated by nodules of blue, and those are lymphocytes and plasma cells making aggregates and sometimes even germinal centers. So at low power, this, I'm like, Rosei Dorfman is the first thought on my mind when I see this. Most cases I've seen are nodules in the subcutis, often on the flank of a, you know, 20 year old woman, a young adult, they often get misdiagnosed clinically assist, just like any nodule in the subcutis would look like. Um, everything's assist until it's not assist, you know, until you biopsy it and realize it's, you know, DFSP or something else. So I, I've got a whole box of things that are not assist that were thought to be cyst clinically. So in any case, um, that's the classic low power view. And then when you go to higher power, what I want to find is these big, huge histiocytes with a ton of pale cytoplasm and large nuclei with pale chromatin and, and prominent central nucleoli. And look, there's usually a lot of plasma cells hanging out around vessels. There's usually a lot of lymphocytes like I showed you from low power. That's the nuclear feature I want to see in Rosei Dorfman disease. They have a very distinct appearance, their nuclei do, and the cytoplasm, they all like kind of blend together and make almost a syncytium. You can't see where one, one histiocyte ends and the next begins. And there's a plasma cell up there. See, it's pale perinuclear Hoff, and it's kind of clock face chromatin or chocolate chip cookie chromatin, if you like little, little blotches of dark purple on the, the nucleus. All right, so that is uh, Rosei Dorfman. So that's what I want to see. Now you guys are like, well, but what about imperipolisis? Because that's the buzzword. But I feel like the this is what I really want to be sure the diagnosis. Imperipolisis is just the icing on the cake. That's great imperipolisis. Where lymphocytes or plasma cells or other uh, white blood cells or even sometimes red cells inside little vacuoles in the cytoplasm of the histiocytes. So the thing is, is it, it takes forever to hunt around a case to find a picture this good to put into a talk or a book. Most cases do not have really perfect imperipolisis in my experience. So the thing is, is that when we go back here, look, there's imperipolisis on this slide, that, 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 everything you see here is cytoplasm, basically. It's a whole sea of histiocyte cytoplasm. So all of the white blood cells in here are sitting inside the cytoplasm of the histiocytes. But that doesn't look pretty like the pictures that we put in books, right? So that's the problem with imperipolisis. It's great when you see it, but you're going to spend forever hunting around for it. And you really don't need it, in my opinion, to make the diagnosis. Also, other things can have imperipolisis. Um, juvenile xanthogranuloma does sometimes. I've seen sarcomas and other things that have little white blood cells in their cytoplasm. So that's important. S100 is going to be positive usually in Rosei Dorfman disease. The histiocytes usually are strongly S100 positive in both their nucleus and their cytoplasm. And S100 will help highlight the vacuoles where the imperipolisis is because it shows that there's a little empty space there and that the, the white blood cells are sitting in that space. So that can be helpful um, uh, to do sometimes.